we sitting here with uh, Dr. Anthony Hood right now, um, and uh, this is the first episode we're doing of Blazer Tales, and uh, what we like to do on the show, we want you to come on and tell us about, you know, your story. Um, I know you're an entrepreneur, um, you're a teacher, you work here, um, I just want you to tell us really uh, kind of how you got into entrepreneurship and uh, how you, you know... How you? How did you transition here to uh, mm-hmm. to UAB? Because I know you didn't start here at first. No, I didn't. So, uh, how was it really? Um, with you getting started and getting your own business started? Because uh, it's a uh, it's one of those <clears throat> things too where I I've, I've started my own business and it's a journey. You know, it really mm-hmm. is, uh, and it's a process too. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of want you to explain kind of how how you got into it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a long story, uh, but try to make a long story short. I was born and raised here in Birmingham with the Ramsey High School. Uh, had a scholarship to go to Tennessee State University to study engineering. Um, I was always a good student in school, but when I got to college, like, I was just, like, so immature. Went to an HBCU, and so, like, I was just kicking it every day. <laughs> I tell people, yeah. like, my, my freshman year of college was, like, School days, a different world, and Beyonce's homecoming. All, all mixed in one. one. All in <laughs> one. And uh, I was there for it all. And uh, so I wasn't I wasn't going to class regularly. I just wanted to hang out with my friends. I was playing cards. And you can't do that when you study in engineering. Oh, yeah. You're taking physics, calculus, AutoCAD, programming, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, that's why I dropped engineering. I ain't going to need a lot. What made you, like, I guess, what was there? Your epiphany, your switch around. By the way, I'm Jay Smiles. I mean, we introduced ourselves. We didn't Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what made you have epiphany? What made you turn around? Like, what made you think, okay, I can't be doing this. Like, I gotta grow up. I gotta study. I gotta do what I gotta it do. Took a while. I mean, for me, it was like I'm at this HBCU. I probably just need to go to a white school. And uh, <laughs> so after my freshman year, I transferred to Alabama. Because in my mind, I was thinking, because I'm at this black school, that's the reason why I'm not doing my work. Because I'm kicking it. And I didn't realize like Alabama's a great place to kick it. Oh yeah, definitely. And so when I definitely. transferred to Alabama. Like, my kicking it went from a 10 to a 28. <laughs> uh, and my GPA went down to a 1.9. Okay. <laughs> so how'd you get that? Like, what was the, I guess it's like a success story. Like, what was your comeback? Like, how'd you make it out? Because, I mean, yeah, 1.9, so, I know for a fact. Mm. Financial aid and your school was looking at you <laughs> right. like, uh, well, sir. I got put on academic probation. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm just wasting time. So I just dropped out. And I came back home to Birmingham, started working at Food World in Fairfield. Making four dollars and eighty five cents an hour. Oh, whoa, Ooh. pause, yeah. y'all. That is the age. You see that age right there? Four dollars oh, at eighty yeah. four yeah, cents. That's a, that's a big was, difference. Nineteen ninety six. I graduated <laughs> high school in nineteen ninety three. The age, the oh age. Um, so I was working there. I was also working part time at a shoe store in Five Points West. And one day, me and the assistant manager were just kind of standing there, just talking because it was slow. This guy comes in. I was leaning up against a gumball machine. Guy comes in, he empties all the gumballs out of it, empties all the quarters, he cleans it up, he goes in the back, he writes my manager a check for twelve dollars, he leaves, I ask the manager, like, what was that all about? He said, Well the guy pays ten percent of whatever his machines make. And I'm like, that one machine made a hundred and twenty dollars? He was like, No, the guy has two machines because we had another store over five points west. And so at that point I was like, Man, like that seemed like some easy money. I told my assistant mm-hmm. manager, like, we can make that money. He was like, well, where do you get gumball machines from? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, do we need to get a license or anything like that? I said, man, bro, I have no idea. Like, I was an engineering major. I wasn't a business major. Right. Um, so long story short, we, we took a week. We did our homework, found out you can buy the gumball machines at Sam's. He went to the courthouse, found out what it was going to take to get a business license, how often we had to pay taxes. And we came up with half and half on our first machine. And that's how I got into entrepreneurship. It was just really by accident. And... We bought one machine, we made our money back, we bought a second machine, then we bought two more machines. Next thing you know, I realized I was, I'm in the vending machine business. Mm-hmm. And from that, uh, we started throwing high school parties for fraternities and sororities. So mm-hmm. GTE, Capital League, and all that kind of stuff. Definitely. We was throwing parties down in the Civil Rights District at LR Hall. Okay. So we started having those parties every Friday and Saturday, making good money. Then we started thinking like, there's not like a high school step show. You got Camille Armstrong, and right. we had, at that time we had a statewide college step show, but we didn't have anything for high school fraternities and sororities. Mm-hmm. So we started having like an annual step show at the Boutwell, and we made a lot of money doing that. Yeah. And then from that, my best friend, he was a he was an undergrad here at UAB. He was actually my roommate when I was at Alabama. He had left Alabama too. <laughs> he was at UAB. He was an accounting major, and he was like, "Bro, since you're doing all these entrepreneurial ventures." Me and you need to start a venture. Like, you my best friend. Like, okay, cool. So we bought that a commercial cleaning sense. franchise. 
So I started doing commercial cleaning through Jana King, and then the next you know, we in the early 2000s, that's when everybody was buying houses and flipping houses. So I got into flipping houses. So it wasn't until I started flipping houses that I realized, you know what, I'm kind of good at entrepreneurship. I'm good at business. Why don't I go back to school for that? That's good. Uh, that's how I got back in school. I wanted to right. ask, how is the market now, I guess, because you got all these businesses, and this is like late 90s, early 2000s, mm-hmm. yeah. so I know prices are different. Oh, yeah. How to, you know, flip houses, I know is a, a different market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess what was your advice, like, what would be your advice on somebody trying to do that? Because I know startup money for that type of stuff, you need some need some money. So I guess, yeah. like, startup what would be your money. advice? Yeah. This thing. College students are already spending a lot of money. Mm. I think about all the thousands and thousands of dollars that me and my parents and my friends' parents paid to live in the dorm or to live in an off-campus apartment. It's actually cheaper to buy a house. Really? Like, if your parents can afford to pay for your apartment rent, they can afford to get a mortgage for a house. True. And if it's a three-bedroom house and you split it with two other people and you charge them four five hundred dollars a month, I mean, the mortgage might only be nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah, so you the you living there free. Right. <laughs> um, and I think about all those houses that was around the University of Alabama's campus back in the early 90s that you could have got for a little or nothing. And now, since they won all these championships. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. Those yeah. values have quadruple, quintuple in right. value. Same way here at UAB. All these houses around Titusville oh, and yeah. Glen Iris and that Homewood, kind of stuff. Homewood, Norwood. Yeah, Avondale. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of people, though, I know a lot of people are buying houses. houses. Right. I know a lot of people are. A lot of people I know, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm getting a house. I was like, I would love to do that, but... I don't know. I don't want to feel planted, so I, I take the apartment, plus I pay my own rent. That's so. the thing about millennials. Millennials don't really like to be tied down. They want to have the freedom and the flexibility either in their jobs mm-hmm. or in their investments. And that right. makes millennials a little different from my generation, Gen X, and my parents' generation, and baby boomers. Yeah. I think we always on the go. Or I know a lot of people who go to school here but you know, want to work outside of Birmingham or want to go travel and go work other places. So. I guess, like you said, people don't want to be grounded nowadays. That's fine. You don't have to be grounded. Like, you can hire a property manager to, to manage your properties, and you get what I call mailbox money. True. Rich. <laughs> we don't even do mailboxes anymore, so you just get, <laughs> right, like, uh, direct, direct deposit, deposit money. You know what I <laughs> mean? Like, if your rent is a $1,000 a month, they will collect your money. Most property managers charge you 10% of whatever they collect. Mm-hmm. So if they collect a 1000 they take 100 and they drop 900 into still, your bank account. We still level nine. And you could be in Sri Lanka. <laughs> but you're getting your money. Right. So why exactly. not do that? Exactly. And I think it's Before one... you mess your credit up. Right. I checked my credit yesterday. <laughs> you guys, I checked my credit yesterday. My yeah. credit is in good shape. Yeah, right. you, you want to co-sign with me also? Ha! Um, yeah, about that. <laughs> I told you, I don't I'm, even want to check my credit score. I'm trying to be up there. I'm like, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm fair. You know, I'm nice. You know, yeah. steady for how I am, the age I am. All I'm trying to get more credit. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I see that stuff as an investment, too, though, you know? Of course it is. Yeah. Anything that you can buy that's actually going to help you make money is a good investment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, too, I know you were, um, you were so close with my uh, my grandfather, uh, mm-hmm. Walter Howlett, mm-hmm. and uh, I know he was uh, he worked really closely with A.G. Gaston before he passed. Right. And uh, one of the things uh, that A.G. Gaston, one of the things that he said that really stuck with me is, um, you know, um, one of his big ideas or concepts was, you know, uh, like find a need and, and feel it pretty yeah. much. And uh, I think that's one thing that inspired my grandfather who uh, who went here to UAB. One, uh, one of the quotes that kind of sticks with me and what inspires me to kind of uh, continue to pursue school. Um, and that's why I wanted to kind of see what your what your idea was of uh, just that, that, that concept, you know, mm-hmm. find a need and feeling it, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, let me say this. 